Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Today we're back on the 67 Mustang Convertible. We brought this car in and we kind of did a, a quick little assessment because it's not running right. It's It's got some, some misfires and it's just doesn't want to idle and just kind of has a few little issues. So we went through, you know, what I do to kind of do my preliminary checks as far as, um, you know, trying to figure out these kinds of basic concerns. Um, we had spark plugs that weren't gapped correctly uh, was one thing. Uh, we're going to do some ignition points, probably going to do a conversion to the Petronics uh, electronic ignition uh, and throw the points out. Uh, but today's video, what we're going to focus on is we're going to remove this uh, little Holly two barrel carburetor and we're going to do a rebuild on that. Okay, so the carburetor we are working on today is a Holly two barrel 2300. We're going to start this. Uh, basic rebuild process with removing the carburetor. So there's four little nuts here on the corners. This one has a hot air choke, disconnecting our vacuum lines for our vacuum advance on the distributor, fuel line, pedal linkage. We got our return spring. Okay, so before I do my teardown, process on whatever carburetor I'm working on. Um, I like to have my little basket here to kind of contain all my small parts so I can kind of dip it in the parts washer, let that kind of soak overnight. What we're going to do is just kind of start by taking off this fuel filter here. So these holes, you got four uh, bolts here on the front bowl and we're going to undo okay use your metering block and your bowl and you're going to have a Basket. I'm going to have to peel that off, scrape that. Okay, so these bases will come off from the main body. So you just got some Phillips head screws underneath here on the bottom. Okay. Sometimes these things get stuck on there pretty good, but most of the time they just kind of come right off. And you got a gasket right there and it comes off. And now from the main body, we can remove the choke assembly here. I'm gonna wanna actually take off this choke thermostat here first. Got these three little screws that hold this plate on. Then there's the thermostat. There's a gasket right there. Looks like that turns nice and free. Now you can get these other screws out of here. And a link has got a little cotter pin right down in here. Pop that cotter pin out. And pull the linkage out. Just like that. And our main body is pretty much disassembled. Except for one little piece down here. OK, 
Okay, now that's good to soak overnight. Now back to this uh, bowl and metering block. These things are, this thing's pretty stuck on there pretty good. Um, I might let that soak overnight and see if it kind of freeze up. We have an accelerator pump right here we need to remove. Comes off. Explorer air pump comes off. Spring. Power valve. Come off. And on the gasket. And we'll let these soak overnight and see if we can separate this meter block from that bowl. Okay, so we let this soak here in the cleaning tank overnight. Sometimes these get kind of stuck on there pretty good, so you want to be really careful when you're prying this off. But it looks like, looks like after soaking it, it's going to come apart. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty gummed up in here. So, yep, we got some more work ahead of us. Okay, so we're going to want to scrape off as much gasket as we can. We're probably going to do some more soaking um, before we do. We're going to remove the jets from the metering block here. So those get cleaned out. We're also going to remove the <coughs> idle air mixing screws. So those passages get cleaned out. We're going to let this soak up quite a bit more here. And then we'll try to run the brush through here. Okay, so here's your float assembly. Here on this one. So we got uh, your needle and seat is located up here in the top. So that's the needle valve assembly. Control your float level. These are just thread right out. Oh man. Probably can't tell on camera, but this thing's pretty, pretty gunked up. Can I clean up the bottom base here while the other parts are soaking? So I'm just going to use my, uh, you know, just kind of standard brake cleaner. Um, just kind of. They're sprayed and you can kind of see the sediment's just kind of like falling right off of it. This is after it was soaked overnight. Okay, so we kind of went around all through the inside. I have a really nice soft bristle brush set that I use to kind of go over everything. I get all the gasket material off the bowl, clean out every, all the grime and build up inside the bowl. Um, kind of run down through the passageways that I can. Um, here's the float sight level screw and take that out get a new gasket on that one and so this will be ready to put back together same thing with the bottom here we kind of you know went through it with a brush and now what I'm gonna do I just take the compressed air and kind of hit all these little passages Okay, for these choke assemblies, um, I usually don't soak these overnight because um, I've had these mechanisms kind of seize up. So what I'll do is just kind of clean this by hand. Um, I spray a little bit of lube down in here to, to work that so it stays working nice. Um, but other than that, I usually just clean these by hand. Okay, and you got a little teeny tiny gasket 
right here where the choke assembly mounts into the main body. That one's pretty petrified in there, but you don't want to forget that because that'll create a little vacuum leak. And with these old carburetors, you never want them to seal up the best you can. Okay, now we're on to the main body of the carburetor. Um, again, this has been soaking overnight, so we're gonna do the same procedure. Just kinda scrape all these old gaskets off and clean her up. So for uh, all my carburetor parts that I try to clean up, <clears throat> when I initially do the cleanup, I put them in this tank here with my solvent. And this is just a small little ultrasonic cleaner. You can get these at Harbor Freight. Uh, they work fairly well, especially for the small carburetors. And you know, I'll get these, you know, something like this with the metering block all gummed up. I'll get it in there, turn the heat on, and then uh, turn on the ultrasonic. And it does, uh, it does a pretty good job. So, Okay, so uh, before I start my reassembly process, I wanna check this float and make sure this float is good. So there's actually a small little E-clip, we call these, it just attaches right here. And so we can kinda just pop off that little clip. and then you can slide the float out. Now what I'm gonna do is just essentially go make sure this thing floats. You know, I'm gonna go fill up my sink and just put it in the water. Number one, see if it floats. I'm gonna hold it underneath the water and make sure there's no bubbles coming out, make sure it's not getting full of, you know, liquid, so. Okay, so after testing that uh, float, it does work. It's not taking on any water. So we're gonna Put this right back in. Okay, it just kind of clips in there. With uh, this is a little E clip. It just clicks on the little stud right there. So, okay, so this metering block has been soaking for a while, and uh, we ran the ultrasonic on it, and um, should be able to run the brush across it now. Okay, once you got uh, your metering block all cleaned up, I mean, she cleaned up pretty good. Um, don't forget to blow all these little passages, blow some compressed air through it. Okay, we're gonna start the reassembly process now. So essentially I like to you know, start with the main body of the carburetor and get the bottom on. So uh, we're gonna open up our kit here. Now we're using just kind of like a generic kit here. This is a GP Sorensen. I'll post a link in the description for this kit for a Holly 2300. And uh, it'll be available for sale on my Amazon store. So for the base gasket, this kit will come with two different base gaskets, and they are different, okay? Uh, one thing about it is the venturi sizes are different, so you're gonna wanna you know, check it matched up here to your main body, and make sure you get the right size of venturis, otherwise you're gonna restrict 
um, airflow. Okay. But uh, the other difference is um, there's, there's some different holes on one of these gaskets. So you want to kind of match this up to make sure you're getting the correct gasket and you're not covering up any of these uh, passageways here. I got all my bottom screws ready to go. They're all cleaned up. Clean, clean up very nicely in the ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, just like anything else that you put together, whether it's a carburetor base or a wheel on the car, you want it to go down nice and even. So you're just gonna work your way around it, tighten a little bit at a time. You don't wanna fully tighten the first bolt and expect it to go on nice and even. You just kinda, and these are just kind of a snug fit. You don't crank these down, because that's how you warp carburetor parts. All this stuff is just a nice snug fit. So we're assembling our metering block here. Um, I'm going to put my idle air screws in and they have a tiny little cork seal that will go in here. So we're going to install that. like that and our little needle valve for our idle adjustment that goes in I go until it stops turning don't force it any further past that and then to put me in the ballpark for when we start this up I just do a turn and a half out and that'll get us in the ballpark and we'll make final adjustments once the car is running again so uh, you got one of those on each side and uh, that's that okay next is the uh, power valve and it gets its own little gasket on there and it's going to go directly into the metering valve metering block and again just a Nice little snug fit. Okay, we're gonna reinstall our jets. I really make sure I clean those out really well. Compressed air through those. Definitely don't want anything clogging up those jet passages. And again, Nice snug fit on those. I like to record the jet sizes too. That way I know what's in there um, in case I need to change those for whatever reason. Okay, so for the metering block gaskets, there's going to be two different types of this. They're very similar, so make sure you're selecting you know, the best fit. Compare it to your metering block and the main body of the carburetor. And then your bowl gasket. There's only going to be one of these, which is true. Only one. And so it's really hard to get that one wrong. Okay, so now the uh, metering block is uh, ready. Okay, so before we install the bowl, we're going to set up uh, our needle and seat. So your kit is going to come with uh, a new needle and seat assembly, new adjusters, and gaskets on there. So we're going to set this up here on the top. Now this just kind of threads in. I like to turn these upside down and get your float so it's like, you know, just pointed straight up, not like this. That's too high and that's too low. You want to get it just kind of perfectly straight like that. And you can make adjustments on this once it's on the car though as well. So, 
and you'll see as uh, the the seat assembly gets close enough it's going to start pushing on the bracket of that float and adjust that float and that looks pretty good right there just to kind of eyeball it and then we can check it through the sight window here uh, and make adjustments once the car is running so um, the other thing is there's supposed to be a spring right here on the bottom of the float um, I actually accidentally destroyed that um, in the cleaning process and so I'll have to get a spare one of those from home uh, but I will put that spring in right here uh, before we you know get this all back together okay so the top of this we'll get um, the larger gasket and then the adjuster the set screw gets the smaller gasket That's got our float set up there for the initial fire up. Bottom side of this bowl, you have your power, or I'm sorry, accelerator pump set up. So you're gonna do a spring, a new, ex new accelerator pump, and the cover. Now I've seen on a lot of older carburetors, these covers get warped, and I've had to kind of file them down flat again. This one actually looks pretty good. So we're just gonna run that. Okay, again, just like anything else that you're doing on these carburetors, just kinda go in a little pattern. Don't over tighten because that's how these things become warped is from cranking down on these really bad you just need a good little snug fit is all they all they need okay that should be that should be good there so it's time to put our metering block and our bowl back on the main body so here's our metering block with both of our gaskets You'll kind of feel it kind of kind of go into place there. It's got a couple little dowel pins, so you'll feel it actually drop into place there. Um, it's already got the bowl gasket. Your lever for the accelerator pump has to go underneath the spring right there. And then you have a series of these long bolts they get their own little gaskets. Okay, again, I know I keep saying this multiple times, but just go around in a cross pattern. And snug these little by little. And you won't warp anything or strip anything out. Don't have any vacuum leaks, fuel leaks. Okay, that feels pretty good there. So there's your bowl assembly with your accelerator pump. So that should be ready to go there okay so the next thing we're going to do is just a little discharge pump valve that goes in the uh, top of the main valve uh, the main body of the carburetor which is right down here so it's really difficult to see so here's kind of the layout of how it goes so you got the screw gasket the squirter valve i like to call them that another gasket and now this is kind of like an optional deal you're either going to have a needle valve um, and no check ball or a check ball weight um, and, a, and a check ball they would actually be like a little weight that would go on top of the check ball but this one had a needle valve so it just gets the needle valve and so that would be the alignment of how that goes and so we'll just kind of drop these in really carefully with some needle nose
this little valve the discharge pump valve is going to go down like this bowl sight screw gets a new gasket okay so the last part we're going to put on here is your choke assembly so um, if you remember when we disassembled we just we just took off this little link right here which gets a little cotter pin and so this just bolts on with three bolts now before we attach this there's a gasket that goes right here because this port here goes into the main body of the carburetor and if you don't uh, put a gasket there you're going to create a small little vacuum leak. Your kit will come with one of these uh, cork looking gaskets and so it goes right here into your choke assembly. Okay, okay so as we connect this we're just going to Hook our linkage up, just like that. Try not to make sure your gasket falls out in the process. And you got these three long screws here. Okay, so this uh, link arm has got to go below this cam that runs the you know, runs as the high idle on the choke when you're actually on a cold start. So you got to get that uh, the link bar below that, get our cotter pin in, so that way we can adjust this choke mechanism properly. Yeah, that makes it functional right there. We'll make all these adjustments when we get back on the car here. Okay, so last piece for the choke is the choke thermostat. So the way this works, this is a hot air automatic choke. Um, you got three types of chokes, right? You got a you know an automatic choke, a, a uh, manual choke and an electric choke. Um, this has a automatic hot air choke because it's got the port here for the hot air tube which goes down to the manifold and transfers you know hot temperature from the uh, manifold up into here and what it does is as this heats up this coil spring will unwind like that okay so the the, whole, the end of this coil spring will attach to the lever inside of here so as this heats up and expands it's going to work the choke okay that's how that works so we're gonna attach that on there but first we're gonna put a gasket on Okay, so this particular gasket in this particular kit, I kind of had to modify the slot here because it wasn't allowing the arm full travel. So there was full open and the gasket wasn't allowing that. So you really want to make sure that um, you, know, you have the correct amount of clearance and this will turn without any obstructions. Okay, so now that we got the gasket modified there, I just had to slot that with my razor blade. So again, we're gonna go on this little smaller uh, armature here for the choke thermostat. And now as you turn this, it's uh, making the adjustments for the choke valve. Okay, now that's on there. You got this little retainer plate. And three little screws.
Okay, so before you lock down your retainer plate there, you want to kind of adjust this. Um, this can be adjusted seasonally as the temperatures change, but um, you know, when, it's, when it's cold, you kind of want to just, or I should say when the engine's cold, you want to be starting off with just kind of a little bit of a crack open like that. As the thing heats up, it'll open. Okay, so we're going to kind of turn it till we kind of achieve. I just kind of, there's a measurement on that. I just kind of do this by eyeballing it. And then if it doesn't, uh, you know, run right on first startup, I'll make adjustments. So it all kind of depends on the seasonal temperature, the altitude you're at, things like that. So well, this will get us in the ballpark. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the bottom side of the choke. Here is the choke idle screw or the high idle screw this needs to make sure if your choke is in the you know cold position this idle needs to be on the cam and the cam is just that brown cam right there so it's going to have a different idle uh, when you're on choke versus your main idle screw which is right here so we need to back this one off it has the little arm right there so that screw is off we are on choke and the choke idle is on the cam and we can kind of open that up a little bit more so let's get this on this car and see how she runs because the way this works is when you fire it up cold you're going to have a higher rpm to kind of help the engine get warmed up it's going to draw hot air from the manifold into here it's going to draw uh, just just heat from the manifold from here heats up the thermostat this will open up you then snap the throttle that will get the high idle cam to drop you then come over here to this idle screw and you idle down normally okay we're going back on the car now so what we're going to do is we're going to put a new gasket here underneath our spacer okay okay carburetor is going on there's some uh, vacuum lines back here that I plug so this this main vacuum line here is plugged unless you're running like a brake booster that would be what that's for there is also a port vacuum uh, a vacuum port right here which is plugged up because uh, I'm running my vacuum advance off this port right here. So we're going to install that and just get our nuts on there. These are just snug like everything else on this carburetor. You just snug everything. Crisscross patterns. Bolt are down nice and even. I'm going to connect my vacuum advance. This car actually needs a replacement choke tube, but I am just going to hook this up temporarily just so I can get at least some heat from the manifold to work this choke. And the fuel line. Okay, this side just needs the throttle linkage. These have these little clips. Here's your return spring. Um, just so you know, we tried starting this sucker up and it did not run well it was running extremely rich it was just pouring fuel down into the intake and so the problem was it actually uh matters which gasket you use um and this is the uh metering block gasket that's between the the, the metering block and the main body 
And so this is the one I originally had in there. The old one kind of fell apart and I didn't really pay attention. But if you can see the difference, the one I use kind of has this uh, open area right here and the one it well, should have got uh, does not have that. So I swapped out that gasket and um, now she runs great. So we're gonna do a quick little tune here on this and um, see if we can get it running even better. I got my vacuum gauge hooked up to the rear port. It's here in the back. I got my timing light set up too. And uh, let's get this thing fired up. Okay, so you'll notice the choke is on and the hot air choke tube is connected so this should slowly kind of open up as it warms. And once it opens up, we're going to snap the throttle and that's going to pull it off the high idle cam and put it on the regular idle cam. Vacuum gauge. Looks pretty good. We're like in between 17 and 18, which is really good for my altitude. I'm here in northern Utah. We sit about 4,000 feet above sea level, so we don't get, you know, overly impressive vacuum readings compared to, you know, other locations, so. I got my timing light hooked up so I can read my RPMs. Sitting at about a thousand, I could probably bump that up a little bit, but that, that's a pretty good high idle. No leaks, so that's good. Okay, should be able to snap this throttle. It should come off the high idle cam and go on the low idle, regular idle cam. There we go. Just kind of set that idle. Now 700, that's not pretty good. So essentially all I do is I tune these to peak vacuum. And you'll hear it in the engine RPMs. You'll kind of hear it kind of stalling off. So as I'm adjusting this, you will see the vacuum change. You'll hear the engine RPM kind of die down. And I lose vacuum as I tighten that screw. That's a good sign. Because if it didn't change, I would have too much of a vacuum leak on this. So as I'm turning it up now, my vacuum is coming up. And I'm just kind of, all I'm doing is slowly turning this idle air mixing screw until I achieve peak, peak vacuum. You got two of these. Got one on this side also. Turning it in right now. Starting to stumble. Come back up with it. We got a couple other little things that we're going to do on this, so uh, check out the other videos and. Uh, be able to get this thing up and running really well so um anyways as always we're here to help keep your mustang on the road and out of the garage we'll catch you next time this is about what i normally see is uh 17 to 18 inches at this altitude with a stock cam so i know i'm good there that's a really good vacuum on this